tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Miss Pat, Rob Christensen, Monroe Martin, Paul Morrissey, and your host, Gabe Kaplan. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Gabe Kaplan! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I can wait for a minute while everybody discusses what I look like. <laughs> or while the older people in the crowd explain to the younger people exactly who it is I am. <laughs> you know, people see me today and they recognize me, but they don't know where they know me from. <laughs> I recognize you, but I'm not sure. Are you Ben or Jerry? Then there's the people that know they know me from television. <laughs> right. <laughs> but not everybody is a, as aware as you. <laughs> they come up with all kinds of television shows. Weren't you meathead on All the Family? <laughs> and if they know it's me, nobody ever says to me, are you Gabe Kaplan? They don't even say, were you Mr. Cotter? They say, are you welcome back, Cotter? <laughs> yes, I'm an Indian. I have three names. Welcome back up. <laughs> My girlfriend is Dances Under Trees, and I'm welcome back up. <laughs> and everybody says the same thing. What happened to you? We don't see you anymore. We used to see you all the time, and now we don't see you anymore. What happened? I don't know what happened. 35 years ago, I was a big television star. I woke up last month at the trailer park at Mohegan Sun. Sally Struthers was in the trailer on my right. <laughs> Manuel Lewis was at my left. I don't know what happened. But I don't even get offered any parts on TV. I used to get offered, you know, like an episode of this show, an episode of that show. And the only one I did in 35 years was Murder, She Wrote. Because I got to play a comedian who killed a nightclub owner. <laughs> now the only thing I get offered, once in a while I get offered a commercial because there's a lot of opportunities for older actors to do commercials. <laughs> because there's a lot of products that naturally older people use. So <laughs> these guys get out there and do the commercials, and it's good. I mean, they probably use these products. But some of them take advantage of the situation, like doing reverse mortgage commercials. <laughs> now, a reverse mortgage is not generally a good idea. Unless you're gonna die right away and you don't wanna leave any equity for your family. <laughs> well, you got Fred Thompson, Robert Wagner, and Henry Winkler telling you to get a reverse mortgage. <laughs> Henry Winkler looks right into the camera and he says, as sincere as he can be, make that call now. <laughs> Sounds like a Fonzie scheme to me. Uh. <laughs> now, I'll tell you a commercial that I'd be great at. They haven't asked me to do it, but I'd be the perfect guy to do it. Viagra. <laughs> I have the perfect Viagra commercial. I take a Viagra. I look down about an hour later. 
and I say, welcome back. You know that 25% of Viagra is taken by men who are in their 60s and 70s and are not married and have no possibility of a date on the horizon. <laughs> so what do these guys do? And you see, ladies, it's very important for men to always feel you're the captain of your ship, that you can fly that flag at full staff <laughs> whenever you want to. Doesn't matter if there's anybody there to salute. So these guys are popping a Viagra, mixing themselves a scotch and soda, <laughs> putting on a Kingston Trio record, <laughs> taking off all their clothes and walking around the house just checking out every mirror there is. <laughs> I'll tell you when I got the idea to come back and do a little stand-up comedy. A few months ago, I was in Las Vegas, and some of my friends were going to see one of these legend shows you know, impersonator shows, and they said, you want to go? And I had nothing to do. I said, yeah, I never saw one of those shows. And I went to see the show, and the first couple acts are just what you'd expect. And then they did this tribute to the 70s. <laughs> and this guy comes out and starts doing me. <laughs> I really didn't know that this guy was going to be there. And he comes out, and he's doing me. And he was pretty good. But then I found out that this guy was making more money doing me. <laughs> than they were offering me to work in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I went up to the producer of the show. I said, listen, if this guy leaves the show, <laughs> can I do me in your show? He said, well, why would you want to do that? I said, because at this point, I can make more money doing me than being me. <laughs> he said, well, how would it work? I said, I got it all figured out. I would come out like somebody else, and then I would start doing me. <laughs> it wouldn't be like, I was doing me, it would be like somebody else was doing a really great impression of me. <laughs> he said, you know, that could work. <laughs> All right, let me see you do you. I said, I'm doing me right now, this is it. <laughs> he said, no, 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 you're being you. If other people don't want to pay you to be you, why should I pay you to be you? <laughs> I'll only pay you if you can do you because the guy that does you now does you great. <laughs> He's been doing you for two years. Everybody loves the way this guy does you. He's very believable as you. I don't know how believable you're going to be as you. I said, who are they going to believe I am? You? He said, look, you don't know the legend business. I know the legend business. I didn't come to you and ask you to be you on my show. You came to me, you asked me if you could be you on my show. So if you want to be you, you got to show me you can do you. I said, between you and me, I'm very confused right now. He said, I'm not trying to insult you. People still want to see Gabe Kaplan. Nobody wants to see you. <laughs> I said, I am Gabe Kaplan. He said, you used to be. <laughs> and you used to do a great Gabe Kaplan. I've seen 10 guys do Gabe Kaplan. You were one of the best I've ever seen. <laughs> but you're not doing it so good anymore. You see, people think Gabe Kaplan's a young guy with a lot of hair. You're an old guy with no hair. It's not a great impression anymore. <laughs> I went back to L.A., told my girlfriend. She went to Vegas to see this guy. Now the guy that's doing me is doing her. 
Hey, we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Miss Pep is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Hey, thank you. We got some really funny comedians here tonight, and I want to make sure that I get everybody's name right because we have a big Broadway singing sensation in the audience, Adele Dazeem, and I don't want to get anybody's <laughs> name wrong. Our first young lady is a very funny young lady. Let's bring her up here now. Let's kick off our show with Ms. Pat. Ms. Pat. by saying, ladies, I've been trying to lose weight, but I'm in that first stage, you know, you know when we're just thinking about it? <laughs> I gotta lose weight, because I'm tired of shopping at plus-size stores like Lane Bryant. Who in the fuck told Lane Bryant that fat girls like wildlife prints on their clothes? <laughs> Zebra, tiger, alligator, Garkzilla. <laughs> I'm walking through the mall with my polar bear shirt on in my leopard pants. Do you know security had a nerve and try and tranquilize me? <laughs> I'm like, get the hell away from me, I'm not a polar bear. <laughs> but I do like shopping there when they got my favorite panties on sale, three for $60. <laughs> Material cost. <laughs> but I hate when the cashier don't know what it feel like to be a plus size woman. I get to the register with my three for 60 panties. The cashier go have in there to take my drawers and hold them up and start folding them like the American flag. <laughs> I look back, people salute me and shit. And I don't know if you know this, but when you a plus size woman, other plus-size women automatically think you they friends? I'm like, get the fuck away from me, fat girl. <laughs> we may not be fat for the same reason. You probably ate too much. My thyroid could be fucking up. <laughs> I'm from Atlanta, I'm from Atlanta. I grew up in Atlanta. Um, not the good part, the hood. <laughs> I grew up with an alcoholic parent. I don't know if any of you guys ever had alcoholic, drunk-ass parents. But my mom was the type of alcoholic, the most she drank, the most she wanted to motivate me. <laughs> Every day when I come home from school, she would say shit like, Pat, reach for the stars. <laughs> and I hope you hit the sun and burn up. <laughs> be all you can be, and if that don't work out, you can always be a hoe. Like, damn, mama, I'm eight years old. <laughs> but my mother wasn't the type of parent that did a lot of whooping because she was a very small lady and she had five kids that was a lot bigger than her. So my mama walked around every day, y'all, with a 22 pistol and used to threaten the hell out of us. <laughs> One day I forgot to wash dishes, she busted my room like a sniper. Papa, oh, bitches, didn't I tell y'all to wash them dishes? <laughs> I'm thinking like, we poor as hell. Where she keep getting all these bullets from? <laughs> you shouldn't have more bullets than you do food. But the shit that used to piss me off the most about my mom, y'all, is every day when I came home from school, she would take me into her bedroom and make me sit in a chair and just throw a fucking newspaper in my lap and force me to read her, her horoscope. 
because she couldn't read. But it used to piss me off because I couldn't read either. <laughs> so I would make up shit. Sagittarius, stop shooting at your kids. <laughs> Daddy ain't coming back. You look better with teeth. <laughs> and I will say this, growing up in the hood, I've been through a lot of my life, I have. I've been shot two times and hit by a dump truck. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck who shot me, they like, who hit you with a dump truck? <laughs> the same dude who shot me. We was in love. <laughs> I wish this shit wasn't true. <laughs> so the first time I got shot, I was standing on the corner in my neighborhood. I was 15 years old, and I was standing there one night, and I'm running inventory through my small business. <laughs> and this guy ride up, and he started shooting, so I started running. Y'all, I ran down through this alley and I jumped over this fence. I know what y'all thinking, Miss Pat, your big ass ain't jumped over no fence. <laughs> Fuck y'all, that was 20 years ago. Back when fences were really strong. <laughs> I ran into my girlfriend's house, she was like, what's wrong? I'm like, they out there shooting. She was like, why you got blood all over your shirt? I looked down, my whole right side is full of blood. So you know, ladies, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I snagged my nipples on the fence. Cause they hang like that. <laughs> I'll give y'all a few minutes. I know there's some scary shit in white people. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for me. If you feel it sorry for me, write me a check. <laughs> I look at my shirt and I'm bleeding really bad. I'm like, get me to the hospital. Y'all, we get to the hospital and the doctor examined me. He was like, ma'am. Somebody blew your right nipple off. I'm like, like a bullseye? He was like, yeah, but you lucky. Because if you was an A cup, you would have died. Them little titties would have got you killed, baby. They real titties. These titties smell like feet in the middle. You okay? <laughs> you know, white girls don't like you talking about their titties. <laughs> but I tell you, my life changed, y'all, when I went through the welfare to work program during Bill Clinton's term. And I tell you, I don't know if you've ever been on welfare, but welfare is a lot like diabetes. If the mama get it, there's a good chance the daughter might get it. My mama got it, my sister got it, my nieces got it, I got it, my fucking daughter didn't get it. Cause let me tell you, I got a 21 year old niece that got five kids and she's on welfare. And I told her the other day, I was like, girl, won't you stop having all these damn babies and get a job? She was like, I can't get no job. I'm like, why? I tell me, cause I got ADHD and I smoke weed. <laughs> I'm like, what? Michael Felt got ADHD, smoke weed, eight gold medal, and a Subway commercial. <laughs> Justin Timberlake got ADHD and he brought sexy back. <laughs> but I tell you, while I was on the welfare to work program, on this program, I was able to get my GED, get off parole, and get my very first job. And I'm doing like most people do when they get their very first job working at McDonald's in the hood. I'm stealing $100 a day out of the register. <laughs> you know they don't pay shit. <laughs> I had just stole $100, y'all, and in walked this white dude with a suit on with a plug in his ear. So, you know, I'm thinking like, holy shit, they done caught me stealing, I'm going back to jail. <laughs> Two seconds later, he say, it's clear, send them in. In walked President Jimmy Carter. Now let me tell y'all something. In this point of my life, I was a straight hood rat. I had just stopped robbing white peoples and running out of grocery stores and shit. 
And I remember Jimmy Carter's face with my social studies book, but I couldn't remember his name for shit. <laughs> he get to my rush and I do the most ghetto shit ever. I looked at Jimmy Carter, I'm like, nigga, where the fuck I know you from? <laughs> <laughs> Secret Service busts out laughing. <laughs> the boy and the girl's like, no, Patricia, that's the president of the United States. I turn around to my nigga, I told y'all know your ass. Your cheeseburger free. <laughs> Thank y'all, I'm Miss Pat. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Rob Christensen is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back. <laughs> Live TV, is this exciting? Live television? <laughs> Last live show I remember was Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Wonder how Ed Sullivan would have reacted to Miss Pat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Our next comedian is going to be seen on Adam Devine's House Party. He's a great, young, funny comedian. Let's welcome him now, Rob Christensen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yo. I, I deserve that, I deserve that. <laughs> yeah, any, any fans of hip hop? I'm a fan of hip hop, yeah. Yeah, I love rap music, but I feel like the DJs in the club are a little too aggressive. Like, what if I don't wanna throw my hands high right now? <laughs> Let alone wave them side to side, I'm tired, I just got off work, I'm trying to have a drink. Talk to my girl, my hands are occupied. <laughs> One time a DJ was like, yo, I want y'all to scream like you ain't never screamed before. So I was like, ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Cause I ain't never screamed like that before. Felt weird. <laughs> Felt really weird. I can't sing along to rap music because the rappers use the one word I'm not allowed to say as a white guy like 37 times per verse. <laughs> Unless I'm alone in my car, I'll say it when I'm alone in my car. <laughs> That's uh, international waters for political correctness, all right? <laughs> you say whatever you want. Get it out in the car so it's not out in the world. Pick your nose, it's okay. We see you picking your nose in your car. But it's okay, because you're in your car. If you eat it though, I'm taking a picture, I'm putting it on the internet. Don't eat it. Do not eat it. But now I just buy the pre-edited rap albums. So when I sing along to Biggie Smalls, it's like, and if you don't know, now you know, you know. <laughs> Or Kanye, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke. You just say the word <laughs> right before the bad word. <laughs> Unless it's a Wu-Tang Clan edit, cause a Wu-Tang edit is like, shame on a hoo -ha, who tried to run game on a Chasha Tiger style. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. <laughs> like they were happy. They were happy to re-edit the album. <laughs> it's not easy being the realest comic in the game right now. <laughs> it's a lot of weight on my shoulders. <laughs> I'm trying to be a grown up. Like, you guys know when you hit the age where you're like, can't steal purses no more. <laughs> Gotta 
Me too. <laughs> it got too complicated, because every time I'd steal a purse, I'd also steal a teacup Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> Chihuahuas, miniature poodles, I got them all in my backyard. Only way I could afford to feed them is steal more purses. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. Some of you are thinking, hey, Rob, why don't you just sell the dogs? Because I love those dogs. They're like my babies. <laughs> I love them. Keeping them. <laughs> so it's tough for me to date, obviously. <laughs> for me, having a girlfriend is like being a detective that only solves the case of why is she crying over and over and over. Was it something on TV, something in a movie? Was it a cat video on YouTube? Was it something I said six months ago? Something I'm saying right now? Something you think I might say six months from now? Or something that an actor on TV that kind of looked like me said, dreams? Why am I in trouble for your dreams? <laughs> One time I asked my girl, I was like, babe, why are you crying? She's like, I'm crying because I was crying and you didn't notice that I was crying. <laughs> what does that have to do with me? That's like one hand clapping, tree falls in the woods, you need a philosopher, not a boyfriend. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> He's just gonna stay here and tell me every joke is dope, which is pretty much what I dream of when I go to bed at night. I just want a front row of people saying, great joke, great joke, great joke. No, that one, no, great joke. Are you guys dating? Is anyone dating here? I can tell. Do you have like a real job or career? Uh, student and she works at a wine store, so I can't date you. I need someone with an actual job, you know? <laughs> now, I need, a, I need a girl that has like a real career, because I can't see myself dating a woman that's sitting at home on the couch all day, eating Doritos, drinking beer, watching daytime TV with me, you know? <laughs> that's my thing. What, are we both gonna be on the couch and, and lie and say, oh, I'm writing today? <laughs> Only one of us can do that. <laughs> I, asked, I like, wanted to like, uh, get along with my girl and spend more time with her, so I asked her to go jogging with me. And she said, no, I can't go jogging with you because my boobs get in the way. <laughs> Great problem to have, because I think we can all agree that we love big boobs, you know? But now, Anytime there's something that her boobs get in the way, we can't do it, and that's it. End of story, I can't even argue. And that annoys me, because what she doesn't realize is that everything I've ever done in my entire life, I've done despite the fact that my balls were in the way. <laughs> everything. They're just always there, and they're always hot and just hanging halfway down my leg like some raw pizza dough that you could toss in the air in a circle and spread out on a table and cover in toppings and pop in the oven and 30 minutes later feed a family of four or five. Just like a weird teardrop of some viscous liquid, a slime of some sort that's just skinny at the top and heavy at the bottom. Like at any moment, it might fall down to my ankles, but it doesn't. It just hangs there forever. <laughs> my balls deserve that. I can't even sleep on my side. I have to sleep on my back. If I wanna sleep on my side, I gotta put a pillow between my legs or I have to throw my balls on the back of my thighs. <laughs> Picture that. Get a mental image of it. I think I'm gonna do steroids. 
just to shrink my balls. <laughs> Obviously, I don't need it to get buff because I'm huge and I'll fight anybody in here as long as you don't have any professional fight experience, you didn't play past pat grammar school sports, you're not a black dude, and you don't know that we're fighting until I punch you in the face, then I'll fight anybody in here. Thank you very much, guys. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Monroe Martin is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Hey, these comedians are great. I mean, really funny people. I'm very happy to be the host, and this next guy is going to continue that. He's going to be on Last Comic Standing tonight. He's here right now. Let's welcome Monroe Martin. <laughs> We can do that for like nine minutes and not be the show. That was my son. Just, yeah. Uh, my friend, he came out. My best friend, he came out and he told me he was homophobic. Because <laughs> saying that you're homophobic is way gayer than actually being gay. Like at first, I, I thought I misunderstood him. and I thought he said hobophobic and I was with him. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I'm terrified of homeless people with their dirty ass hands and all those coats. Why the fuck they have so many coats? <laughs> scary as shit. But he's like, no, no, homophobic gay people. I was like, why? Why the fuck are you afraid of gay people? They're awesome. They smell delicious. <laughs> it's like having walking potpourri with you the whole time. <laughs> I don't classify homophobia as a real fear because real fears have movies based on them. <laughs> if you're afraid of monsters, horror. If you're afraid of black people, Tyler Perry movies. <laughs> like, I've never seen a movie with a group of gay dudes chasing one guy through the woods. That shit is not out there. <laughs> So get back here. You need to get in touch with your sensitive side. <laughs> That's on the phone. It's like, ah! Like, I can see if a gay dude snatched him up out of his bed, dressed him up like a butler, and paraded him around parties. <laughs> That's some scary shit to go through. Like, I wouldn't like him either, but it never happened. Like, this is the problem that I realize most people have with gay people, is that they can't stop thinking about the sex. And any time you think about sex you're not involved in, you're always against it. <laughs> <You see? laughs> you see two gay dudes out having fun, you're like, oh, they do it to each other without me. <laughs> you go home and keep them from loving each other. You're a goddamn hater. <laughs> We're not the only species that have same gender sex. Bears do too. You don't see people protesting the woods. Like, my kids eat s'mores at these campsites. You take that shit upstream. <laughs> <laughs> not like that, man. This is the rules of the woods. If the alpha male bear is challenged by another bear in front of bear bitches, <laughs> whoever loses gotta give up that booty. <laughs> yeah, there's no love involved at all. 
She was raw aggression, and I want to see it. <laughs> Just another bear, like teasing the bear that lost. Like, yeah, you know what to do. Assume the position. <laughs> oh, that's your girl? Hey, get his cubs. Make him watch. I hate people that try to think that we'll that we'll live in a world where like people aren't offended, like like racism will never exist. Racism will always be around because it's in too much of the stuff we do daily. Like I just figured out the Incredible Hawk was a black dude. Like yeah, when he's Bruce Banner, he's a little frail white guy, but when he gets angry, he's a big black motherfucker. <laughs> But they can't make them black because it's too obvious. So they make them dark green and put slave pants on them. <laughs> like, yeah, like even his enemies are clear signs that he's black. Like Spider Man, the Sinister Six, Batman has the Joker, Superman has Doomsday, the Incredible Hulk has the government. <laughs> He's running from the man every comic book. I'm not stupid. That's why I just gave up and I'm like, yeah, I'm racist. I don't care anymore. I'm racist, but guess what? I'm not a lazy racist. I don't hate everybody, just a specific group of people. I don't like old white women who are polite to me. I feel like they're trying to get brownie points because they did some fucked up shit to my grandparents. Like they peed in a colors only fountain and watched them drink from it. Like, yeah, look at this shit. <laughs> and I see that same old lady on the train. She's being nice. She's like, you can have this seat next to me. <laughs> Bitch, I know what you did. <laughs> you ain't getting into heaven on my watch. <laughs> see a little white spear floating into heaven. I smacked that shit out the air like Matumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my house. Can't get offended. You know what the problem is, man? And I realized this, we got soft because we, 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 we censor ourselves. Like we no longer tell each other no. Like we say sorry in replace of no. You know, like when a homeless dude asks you for money, you go, oh, I'm so sorry. Why, why the fuck are you sorry? <laughs> he inconvenienced you, you didn't do shit. <laughs> tell the truth, like no, I'm not giving you money cause you're just gonna get drunk and then stink up some subway car. <laughs> Then I'm responsible for the shitty cart on the train. <laughs> Even a job, a job doesn't tell you no anymore. They say, sorry, the position has already been filled. <laughs> and just saying, and just instead of saying no, you spell Wednesday wrong on your application. <laughs> <laughs> You're too fucking soft, man. Words mean too much, like the N-word still means a lot. Like people get upset when it's said. I say it, but I only say it because I don't have a broad vocabulary. <laughs> if I don't know a word, nigga jumps to the front of my brain. <laughs> it happens at the worst times too, it's embarrassing. Like one time I got way too comfortable. I was at a barbecue, rap music playing in the background. I'm like, hey nigga, pass me that fork. My grandma was like, what the fuck you just called me? It's <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, my nigga. I mean, grandma. <laughs> I got called the N-word by my niece. She's seven years old. I thought she was rapping, so I was still waiting for the beat to drop. <laughs> Never brought that heat. This is what happened. She was in the bathtub. It's time for her to go to sleep, so I must have ruined her fun. I'm like, get out the tub so you can go to bed. She stood up with an attitude. She was like, no, nigga. <laughs> Just like that, I was upset, but I still had to be a respectful adult. So I said, bitch, I will drown you. <laughs> Y'all been awesome. My name is Monroe.
stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Paul Morrissey is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Hey, this hour is just flying by. Our last comic is going to be on David Letterman tonight. When you go home, put on David Letterman. He's going to be on. He's here now. Here is Paul Morrissey. Oh, thanks, sir. Thanks, everybody. Uh, it's a big, uh, big week for me. Uh, <laughs> I was celebrating at the hotel last night. Uh, not saying I was drunk, but I did try to get into my hotel room with a Red Lobster gift card for about 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's what kind of night it was. Uh, I'm a pale fella. Uh, <laughs> this isn't even a spotlight. This is just me glowing from being in the sun. I store light. So tan is not one of my colors. I have two colors. I have white and I have red. <laughs> I have where I put sunscreen and where I missed with the sunscreen, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, it just looked like a big fat candy cane sitting on the beach there. Big white handprint on my belly. It's not a good look for the ladies. And I'm jealous of you people that tan, you get complimented, you know? Strangers will come up and say, oh, what a beautiful tan. Whenever I spend all day in the sun, people come up and say, oh, that looks like it hurts. <laughs> you got a little fire engine red going there, lobster boy. Even have a reddish hue to me, and uh, I don't know if I'm so pale you can see the blood through my skin, or what's going on? Like, whenever I Photoshop my pictures on the computer to remove the red eye, it just blacks out my whole face. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, I'm like old-fashioned white. It's not cool to be this white anymore. The ideal time to be this white was like the 1700s Europe, you know? <laughs> Sickly pale, out of shape. It was impressive, you know? Bet that guy's a king, he's got a castle. <laughs> now it's just sad white guy. I'm allergic to hypoallergenic shampoo. That's how bad the earth wants to get rid of me. <laughs> so, uh, I like cake. Oh, yeah. I like, uh, I, I love birthday cake in particular. I got uh, obsessed with birthday cake. I was like 12 years old. I snuck into this adult birthday party for my uncle. And they did this thing, it was like an eight foot cake, but it wasn't a real cake. They had a stripper jump out of the cake. And I don't remember how hot the stripper was. I don't remember how disappointed I was when I found out it wasn't a real cake. I don't know what that says about me. It's like eight foot cake. This is gonna be the greatest party ever. <laughs> Can't wait till I grow up, get an eight foot cake for my birthday. <laughs> my buddy's like, no, it's just cardboard. Stripper jumps out of the cake, naked chick. That's the best part. I was like, what the hell are you talking about, man? Why would they do that to this guy? It's his birthday, wants birthday cake. <laughs> that's the whole point of life, really. That's when I realized why families hate each other. My uncle's an old married guy, so for his birthday, they hired a really hot naked chick that he can't have sex with, and a cardboard cake that he can't fucking eat. <laughs> it's like the worst birthday party ever. No sex and no cake. <laughs> Not good. I love ice cream, too. Favorite kind of ice cream? You guessed it. Neapolitan. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know, Neapolitan is an Italian word that means two good flavors, one shitty one. <laughs> you hear that sound? That's the room divided by strawberries, what that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I take that shit seriously, man. I broke up with a girl because she didn't like ice cream. Yeah. She is Canadian, didn't like ice cream. She said, ice cream's too cold, it makes my head hurt. I was like, yeah, that's the same way I feel about fucking Canada. <laughs> All right. Are we too close? Right. 
I'm the most Canadian person looking in here, right? Whitey. Um, so, so I love sports. Uh, I'm obsessed. I think I, kn I met the greatest athlete on the planet. I know who it is. Do you have any idea who it is? Not LeBron James. No? Not Michael Jordan. He's fucking 50. Come on. <laughs> Don't date yourself here. It's, it's a 65-year-old woman named Diana Nyad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you don't know, she's, she swam from Cuba to Florida. She wasn't escaping or anything. She just did it on her own. She did it for 53 hours straight, 110 miles with no shark cage. And you're like, Paul, why would there be a shark cage? Oh, because there's sharks chasing you the whole way too. As if just the staying up two days in a row swimming wouldn't be hard enough. There's sharks trying to eat you the whole time. That's more, two days, that's more than half of Shark Week is just us watching. Diana, swim from sharks. And we'll say, let's say LeBron might be the greatest athlete on the planet. Just say, put him in a pool and say, don't drown. In two hours, he's dead. You know what I mean? I don't think you guys are getting this, man. Let's take the swimming out of it. Let's say dry land. It's the equivalent of like jumping in the bear cage at the zoo and just have the bears chase you for five marathons in a row through a Sharknado, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what a Sharknado is, that's a tornado with fucking sharks in it. <laughs> and if you don't believe in global warming, they didn't have that stuff in the 50s, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you gotta cheer me up a little bit though. I had to rent a car last week. And uh, never does a lot for your self-esteem when you go to the rental place. You ask for the cheapest piece of shit car you can get. Then they give you the same car that you actually own. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. So uh, I, I'm trying to eat a little bit better. I went to a nu nutritionist, came to say it, to try to eat better. It's a weird thing. You basically tell someone what you ate and they tell you how bad it was that you ate it, you know? It's like going to confession for food, pretty much. I don't need that kind of guilt in my life. And you always lie about what you eat, make it sound healthier than it is. You don't sound like a fat slob to this person. So she said, what did you have for lunch today, Paul? I said, I had a sandwich, no mayonnaise, no cheese. She said, that sounds healthy. What kind of bread did you use? Uh, chocolate? <laughs> what kind of sandwich was that? It was an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Sound like a slob, I'm trying to eat better. I, I go to like the fast food sandwich place, you know, Subway, but I, have a, I had a breakthrough, man. Like I ate at Subway nine days in a row, and it was like an acid trip, you know? I saw through all the bullshit. <laughs> like it, I think all the meat at Subway is the same. They just have a guy that spray paints it different colors in the back. <laughs> oh yeah, I did the research, it's all true. But they have like 40 kinds of bread in Subway, which that's made up too. There's only two, let's be honest. There's white and wheat. Everything else is just some shit they made up that week, you know? You go in there, they have like bedazzled pumpernickel. It's like something they rolled around the street after a car accident, you know? Glass and plastic shards. It's all about the fiber. Or it's a grain, nine grain, 20 grain. You want 30 grain bread? Pretty soon it's just gonna be wood, right? <laughs> yeah, can I get a six inch turkey? Uh, is that cedar? <laughs> Foot long roast beef on bamboo. <laughs> yeah, I want it toasted, you bet your ass it do. <laughs> and varnished, yeah. Give it a good shellacking. Protect my wood. But I'm trying to eat, make my own sandwiches, which gets complicated too. Like I went to the deli, I was like, hey, could I get a pound of turkey? And the lady at the deli said, uh, turkey, like for a sandwich? Is this your first day? What the hell are you talking about? So I decided to have fun with her. I was like, no, no, not turkey for a sandwich. I need turkey for a shower curtain. Can you do that? I just want eight feet by six feet of turkey. I let you just eat my way out of the shower in the morning. <laughs> So I live in California now. We legalized the gay marriage, which, yeah, that's a great law. The, yeah. The ones, 
The ones that cause the problems are these other weird laws, like common law marriage states have. You ever hear that one? That's just if you live with the same person for a couple years, whether you like it or not, boom, you're married. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one that scares the hell out of me. And it's going to get confusing. A lot of these states will end up having gay marriage and common law marriage, you know? So what happens, you just end up with two loser dudes sharing the same <laughs> shitty apartment for a couple years. Both working part-time at the pizza place, partying every weekend. A few years goes by, boom, they're married. See him at a party. I don't know Tony and Jim were gay. They're newlyweds? <laughs> when did they fall in love? They didn't. They just never got their shit together. <laughs> hey, thank you guys so much. That was fun. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Straight to me. And we're gonna close out tonight's show by reintroducing everybody that was here. Everybody was fantastic. This has really been a thrill. Miss Pat. Bob Christensen. Myra Martin. And Paul Morrissey. Thank you very much for coming.